This podcast is brought to you by Foreign Language Mastery, how to learn any language effectively. For more language learning tips and interviews with other experts, come to l2mastery.com. Hey, I'm Antonio Graceffo. I am the author of The Monk from Brooklyn, an American at the Shaolin Temple. I'm also the author of Rediscovering the Khmers. Now, in addition to my interest in martial arts, which I've been doing for about 31 years, I'm also very interested in linguistics, and I've published several hundred uh, articles on the subject of language acquisition theory, and I'm presently working on a book on language acquisition theory. First question is always asked me is Antonio, are there any tricks uh, to learning foreign languages? And uh, the answer is the trick to learning foreign language is the same as the trick to learning martial art. You have to just train really, really, really hard all the time, work hard, study all the time. You know, when I'm doing Chinese, I do five hours a day of sitting and writing characters. When I did German, I did literally sort of 18 hours a day of reading novels. I used the core novel method. I read novels in German, but they were ones I had already read in English, or I renewed the story in English, and then I read them in German. I remember one of my first ones was Dermot den Wolftanz, Dances with Wolves, and Dracula, und, uh, was noch? Oh, Der Bodyguard, you know, the uh, Kevin Costner movie. I read that in German because I said, well, I already know the story, I'm just going to read, and you don't use a dictionary, you just plow through it. Whatever you don't understand, you just let it go, and you'll understand it next time it comes around, or the time after that, or the time after that. The core novel method is brilliant for building your ability to communicate and function in a foreign language. Uh, it doesn't necessarily build a good translator, the problem being that you reach a point where you completely understood what was said but you can't translate it because those synapses were never developed in your brain. The, the jump from the foreign language to your native tongue didn't happen. Instead, you developed two native tongues. Of course, you'll never reach native speaker fluency in your in your foreign language, but basically it functions like a native tongue and you'll actually have trouble relating it back to your native tongue. So core, core novel method, and uh, I also watched movies constantly in German. I watched all, again, all my favorite TV shows. I love Star Trek, I love Simpsons, I watched it in German, and that helped me learn German. They'll go hang out with their Chinese friends, and they're somehow learning Chinese by osmosis. You know, an hour of spending time with your friends is equal to about three minutes of study. You sit down with your book, you're studying very specific vocabulary. That vocabulary is then reflected in your grammar exercise, is reflected in your speaking exercise, is reflected in your listening exercise. And by the time you get through the chapter, you've used each word 25,000 times. You go hang out with your friends, they're talking about a million things, they may not come to the same topic twice, may not come to it quickly enough, and you'll lose it before they come back to it, and you're just not learning as fast. And there's so many people that are proud of the fact that I am among the people, I go out, I hang out with Chinese people, I have Chinese friends, I'm, yeah, yeah, okay, 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 you do that for a year, I'm going to study for a year, and we'll compare at the end of the year. There's actually a linguistic theory, which is called listening to Chinese radio, and the theory says, if you were locked in a jail cell for 20 years in isolation with the Chinese radio going 20 hours, you know, 24 hours a day, 20 years, you're listening to the radio, listening to the radio, listening, when you came out of the cell, you still wouldn't be able to speak Chinese because you would have no reference for what any of those words meant. You couldn't even begin to learn them and your brain would very quickly, inside of two to three minutes, would learn to just tune it out. And I see it with myself. I my whole life, growing up in New York, I was exposed to Chinese characters. There's so many Chinese characters on any given street in New York City, and you just learn to block them out. If you ask a New Yorker, you go, are there Chinese characters on the street? They would probably say no. And so, no, of course not. What are you? It's America. We don't write in Chinese. And then you walk down the street, oh, there's Chinese characters. There's Chinese. You block them out. And I find myself doing that here. So I'll hand me a menu, and I'll go, in Chinese, I'll say, oh, I'm sorry, can you just read the menu to me because I can't read Chinese. And then I'm like, I know how to read Chinese, give me that, you know, and you read it and you, and you understand it, but you've just blocked it out your whole life. And so we want to avoid blocking out behaviors and we want to avoid 
study methods that create blocking out behaviors. One of the fastest way to create blocking out behaviors is to hang out with big groups of Chinese people singing karaoke, drinking beer. They're talking a mile a minute, you listen intently for a second, and then your brain gets tired, you tune them out. And then you just get used to tuning them out. And then even when they say something that you know or that you understand, you've already tuned them out, you don't hear it. people ask me about is tones and the answer is I am completely unaware of tones. If I am using them, I'm unaware of it. I can't hear them, I can't identify them. When we have exercises, they go listen to you know listen to this and mark the tone. I have no idea. People tend to understand me when I'm talking, so I'd have to guess that I am using tones subconsciously, but I'm unaware of it and I don't hear it. So another strategy, a defense strategy, growing up as a multilingual kid You've never had a full set of vocabulary in a foreign language. So you've learned to, for example, I was in the hospital in China and I wanted to tell the doctor I was dehydrated, but I didn't know the Chinese word. So I said, last night I went to the toilet 20 times and now there's no water in my body. All right, so I described it. And you've learned to just describe things uh, as a defense mechanism. When I use a word that I know could easily be confused because of my lack of tones, I contextualize it or I use the full sentence where the answer would be appropriate to just give the answer, you know, um, uh, a single word answer, but instead I'll give a whole sentence because that way I want to make sure they understand it. And that's a defense mechanism. That's a good strategy for survival. It's not a good strategy for learning because remember learning, we want to keep growing and doing it correctly. And the problem is if you're constantly around Chinese people uh, speaking and conversing and surviving, you're never going to develop the appropriate vocabulary, the appropriate skills, and then you go home and you congratulate yourself. Wow, I talked to Chinese people for three hours tonight. I must be great. They know you're not great. You tuned out 70% of what they said. Everything you said, you controlled. You know, you described instead of uh, instead of uh, using the appropriate vocabulary. And for people who don't have a lot of Chinese friends who do this infrequently, there's the added thing that they had the same conversation 27 times, and it's not a conversation. It's where do you come from? How many brothers and sisters do you have? Where do you work? You know, what color is your pencil? I don't know. It's a set of questions that they always ask you, and you know how to answer it in Chinese. That's not a conversation. Uh, my German professor used to call that me want cookie syndrome, which is if you say me want cookie, people know what you want, and they'll give you a cookie, but it doesn't mean you're saying it correctly.